So the first time that I was standing at the edge of the airplane, 13,000 feet above the ground, my heart was racing and I still wasn't sure if it was a very good idea. I never would have imagined that skydiving was actually going to help me get the perfect position at my dream job in the aerospace industry someday. And furthermore, I wouldn't have guessed that that job was then going to feed back and help me achieve new heights in my skydiving career. My name's Laura Stiles. I'm a professional skydiver and an aerospace engineer at Blue Origin, and I'd like to share with you a story today about how the motto, work hard, play hard, has played a big part in my life and what it's helped me to achieve. So this coming summer, I will have been skydiving for 10 years, and over those 800 jumps, I've gone through different phases of jumping just for fun, where you're giving high fives to your friends in the sky, to more serious things like competing at collegiate national skydiving competition, uh, learning new things, trying out different disciplines of skydiving, uh, wingsuiting here. That was the first time that I got to put on a wingsuit and learn how to pilot that. Um, and then also coaching students. And in my last year at grad school, I was able to get my instructor rating so I can take people for their very first skydives. So after school, when I started at Blue Origin, skydiving was completely outside of the workplace. But it didn't take long because if you guys know any skydivers, you might know that we're not always very shy or very quiet about our favorite hobby. So it didn't take long until most of my coworkers knew what my favorite weekend activities were. Uh, one of those people who had heard some of my skydiving stories was uh, Rob Meyerson, who's the president at Blue. And he was running the new graduate rotation program and said, you know, took me aside one day, hey, you've been working with parachutes for a while. And uh, we think maybe after your rotation, a good spot would be the responsible engineer for the crew capsule parachute system. So these three giant canopies are very different than a small skydiving parachute. Um, a parafoil flies very differently than a round. Uh, but I soon found that my personal connection to parachutes was going to be a big help uh, at my job. It was basically like I'd been studying for 10 years already for those pop quizzes, like why would we use that material or how many times can you actually fly a parachute? And so from working with my own gear, I know that it's very important to understand the system that you're working with. And so I started learning all the details about this new species of giant parachute. I mean, I found that there are actually quite a few similarities between the two. Uh, there's crossover in materials, crossover in the terminology, um, and also a lot of crossover in the technologies. Uh, some examples are that both systems use a smaller parachute to pull out the main system, um, or that we both use a reefing system to get a slower, more controlled opening. Um, and then the packing, while it's a very different size, uh, it's really about the same principles. You want to make sure that you have a nice opening and be able to get safely to the ground. And speaking of safety, um, from being in the skydiving world, I know that uh, it can be, we have to be very careful. Um, complacency can lead to consequences, and unfortunately I've had to see some of those consequences firsthand in the skydiving world. So if I bring anything to the table at Blue, I want it to be uh, the mindset of how important the parachute system is and how vigilant we all have to be when working with it. So these are some of the things that my skydiving career has brought to my work, um, but there are also a lot of things that work has brought to my skydiving. Uh, the most obvious one is just sort of the surface level. Doing the engineering of a parachute system has brought a better understanding of the technical aspects um, of my own parachute, um, brought new insights into how I pack it, and just a better appreciation for the technology that's come along from people who used to jump rounds to now these very safe parafoils that we can fly and maneuver very well. Um, but it's really the work that I've been doing with the New Shepard launch team that has fed directly back into my skydiving. Uh, so starting with the first launch of the New Shepard back in 2015 and up through the transonic escape this last October, I've been either supporting or serving as the crew capsule controller on launch day in the mission control room. And the capsule controller is responsible for powering on, doing all the system checkouts, uh, getting ready for flight, um, and then through the flight, the landing, and the post-flight safing. And so coming into a role like this, I thought, OK, I'm a skydiver. Like, I know what adrenaline is. Um, I'll be great for this role. Uh, but it had been 10 years. It had been so long since the first skydives where I really had those nerves. So I had to reteach myself and relearn how to handle that much adrenaline. Um, there are a lot of other aspects of being in the control room. Uh, that are necessary for being on a big skydive. Um, some of the examples are very quick decisions. Uh, both during a launch and during a skydive, you can be presented in a scenario where you only have a split second to make a decision and you don't want to be second guessing yourself. Some other things are uh, emotional discipline in a very exciting environment, um, which to be honest, wasn't very natural for me. So I had to work on that a little bit. Um, 
Another example, situational awareness of everything that's going on, big picture. In a skydive like this, there's a lot going on, multiple airplanes, lots of people, so you have to be very good about seeing what the situation is. Uh, and so a lot of these things that I've been working on in the control room um, have helped feedback into my skydiving career. Um, another example is uh, the level of focus. So in the middle of a terminal count or when you're hanging onto the edge of the airplane before the skydive, you certainly can't be thinking about something that you did wrong yesterday or worrying about what you're going to be doing tomorrow. Um, it's this very in-the-moment mentality where you have just pure focus on the success of the task at hand. Um, and I find that I don't get that anywhere outside of the control room or an extreme sport like skydiving. Uh, so while working in mission control, it's really helped prepare me for bigger skydives. Uh, the biggest one is one that I participated in just last November. It was a world record skydive. And this skydive was the world record for the largest all-female vertical formation skydive. So we had 65 women coming out of four airplanes that were flying in formation uh, to fly together and build this large formation in this head-to-earth flying position. And so the, to organize an event like this, it took coordination from people all across the world. We had women from 20 different countries coming together to work as a team uh, to accomplish this one goal together. And so what I, what I realized in participating was that it takes a lot more than the skills of just how to fly your body and how to do this type of flying. It took a lot of the mental skills that I've been working on in, in the control room. So showing a picture or talking about it doesn't really do it justice, so I'd like to show you uh, the video from my helmet during the world record skydive. Here we all are exiting the plane together. I was in that far back, called it the right, right trail plane, so furthest away from the formation. So we have a long time while the base builds and the people from the closer planes come together to start building this formation. And everybody has their own specific slot uh, because you have to declare the formation on the ground and everybody has a certain place to go. So you kind of wait till it builds in front of you and then can come into the assigned slot. And right about now, you can see, you're, you have to stay looking across the formation the whole time, but you can kind of see, I can tell that nobody else is flying in, and it feels very calm and solid. Um, and so I'm pretty sure I start nodding, which is, doesn't work very well for a helmet-mounted camera, but uh, I can tell that I'm pretty sure that we got this skydive, and, if this video had volume on it, you'd hear me, once this parachute opens, start doing a few little silly yells because of how excited I am. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so being a part of this skydive was the biggest event so far in my skydiving career, and I found that it took a lot more than just the technical skills of learning how to fly my body but also those mental skills, um, and found that I learned most of those actually outside of skydiving. So I want to leave you with this idea that you shouldn't expect work to be the only place where you can get better at your job. Uh, for me, my passion for parachutes has opened a lot of doors, both in my career and in my life. So I want to encourage you to go try new experiences. Skydiving isn't necessarily for everyone, but I want to encourage you to find what your passion is and see what doors it can open for you. Thank you. Thank you.